Stu Pearson was the second British soldier to step on a mine at the Kajaki Dam in Helmand Province that day in September 2006. He wouldn't be the last. By the time Stu and the rest of his three para colleagues were winched out of the minefield, half a dozen men had suffered serious injuries. Three soldiers had lost their legs, and one, Corporal Mark Wright, had lost his life. And the person you saw at the beginning of that extract, Stu Pearson, is here. Hello, Stu. Um, just Hi. tell us a bit more about what happened that day exactly. Um, basically, I was trying to rescue a colleague who'd uh, stood in a mine previous to the one I stood on. Um, he was on his way to do a possible sniper shoot against the Taliban that he'd seen uh, the night before. And uh, on trying to uh, rescue him and get him out, I, I subsequently stood in, a, stood in a mine and lost my left leg as well. Mm, and we heard about the fatality there as well. I mm -hmm. mean, terrible injuries. How do you feel about this being turned into a film? I think it's a fantastic idea. I'm really looking forward to it, yeah. It's great. What would you like the film to actually bring across? Because it sounds like horrendous conditions you were working in. It, it, it brings out the, the bravery of um, everyone down there, not just um, not just myself and, and Mark and the other guys that get uh, awards. Just everyone involved was really so brave because we were all friends with each other, so we're looking out for each other. Um, and obviously, Mark, Mark, Mark died. He he knew. I mean, he knew he was he knew he was dying that day. Definitely, when he got winched out, he he, he knew he was dying. And you almost lost your own life. What kept you going? Um, I think it was Mark kept on, Mark kept on calling to me, kind of, because I was wanting to I, w I was wanting to fall asleep, um, but I knew that if I fell asleep, I wasn't waking up. Mark kept on calling out to me to um, basically to to wake to wake up as such. So, and I didn't realise the injury. He he actually had himself. The people uh, behind the making of this film are very passionate about the reasons why they're making it. Let's hear now from the director, Paul Caters, about his reasons. Push left, you see the broken down... You have to ask yourself, why is it that we don't see British troops on screen? Uh, the Americans uh, quite happily make war movies about their heroics, but we never seem to show our heroes. Did heroism die out in 1945? Um, this modern generation needs some kind of representation on screen and it's really important we get this made. In fact, the, the commander of British forces at the time in Afghanistan, Brigadier Ed Butler, was, was behind this, is behind this film as well. Mm -hmm. Do you sort of subscribe to the idea that the legacy of British involvement in Afghanistan should be remembered in this way in a feature film? Absolutely. I mean, um, for myself and over 200 members of the armed forces, our, our, lives have, our lives have changed. We've, as in, over 200 of us have uh, lost limbs. So our our war is always going is is always going on. Where uh, although the troops are getting extracted next year, the war is over. But our war is ongoing forever, basically. And money still needs to be raised to get this film actually in the cinemas, doesn't it? 1.2 million, I think. That's correct, yeah. Uh, but money that's 10% of the proceedings of the film will go to help military charities. And presumably, for people like yourselves, that kind of help is crucial. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, our old um, commanding officer, Stuart Tuttle, he's uh, overseeing the money that's going to the uh, military charities once it's actually uh, been released and is... Um, it's reached its target of how much it um, needs to make. So, Stu, who do you want to play you? Uh, Brad Pitt, I think. <laughs> we'll see if he's available. Stu, yeah. Pearson, good to see you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Cheers.